Radio Indiana, WIBC, Indianapolis. Parole in a 20-year-old murder case, and this is WIBC News. May 1965, when 16-year-old Sylvia Likens was tortured to death by members of the Banachewski family with whom the child was staying while her parents worked with a traveling carnival. When the case broke, Paul Page was our anchorman and the late Bob Hoover, our street reporter. The following is an excerpt from a 1965 newscast in which Bob Hoover spoke with Richard Hobb, who explained what he did to the girl. All I did was write out that thing on her stomach, and then I hit her about 10 or 15 times. But How come? Well, most because the girl he told me to. Hoover then spoke to one of the Banachevsky children, who told him how the victim was treated. She refused food. We tried to get her soup every once in a while and stuff like that, and she wouldn't take it. Well, how about these scratch marks on her stomach? Who put them on her? I did. Why? Well, Gertie just thought of it. She said, since you branded us, we're going to brand you. So she itched in with a pen, and I went over it. She showed me how to do it, and then I went over it. I, I did it. Did you ever use any hot irons on her? No. Yeah, I, that three on her stomach, I did half of that. Mm-hmm. And Shirley Ann did the other half. Where'd the S come from? What do you mean? There's a big S branded on her stomach, right? That's, what, one I'm of her breath. Huh? That's what I'm talking about. Well, that's what you're talking about. Well, how about the inscription on there, I'm a prostitute and proud of it. Who put that on? I did. Did you scratch it on there, paint it on there? How'd you do it? Well, like I said before, Gertie wrote it down there with a pen, and I did the rest. Mm-hmm. She showed me how to do it. And had Gertie abused this girl? Yeah. Gertrude Banachevsky, however, had a different story. I did never beat that girl. Never. She was beat up on by other girls. In fact, my own daughter stopped in the jaw and broke her wrist. And uh, so, I mean, there you go. And, and, and girls around the neighborhood beat her up, bloodied her nose. I, one girl broke her nose, in fact, I think. Were you ever in contact with the police on any of these occasions? Well, in the last two weeks, uh, in fact, um, uh, I think if, if you'd talk to my daughters, I, I'd ask them that uh, the, the children's father and I are divorced. And he's a policeman in Leech Cover was. And uh, I've asked the girls repeatedly, call their dad, ask them what to do. And in fact, I, I asked Jenny, I said, Jenny, and, and I told Sylvia, I said, Sylvia, I'm going to have to call the police or somebody because I can't have any responsibility. But the police were called only one time, and according to Hobb... Well, she, uh, she, I come in in about, she come up from the basement, and we noticed she was cold and everything, so we carried her upstairs, give her a warm bath and artificial respiration. When, well, she stopped breathing. See, we gave her a warm bath, and then she stopped breathing. And so I gave her our social restoration for about 10 minutes. And then uh, I went and called the police. By the time police found the girl, she had been dead some 8 to 12 hours. Gertrude Banachevsky is now 57, was granted parole from the Indiana Woman's Prison yesterday. She is expected to be released within three weeks, as soon as her parole officer completes a placement program. It's 8.04. 20 years ago, Sylvia Likens was the victim of the ultimate child abuse. She was beaten, burned, and starved before dying. Gertrude Banachevsky was convicted in the 1965 murder. Earlier this week, it was reported the state parole board had decided to free the woman. Phone calls to WIBC yesterday were strongly opposed to the decision. In Greenwood, Tommy Elmore is president of the newly formed Indiana chapter of Society's League Against Molestation, SLAM. She hopes to gather 5,000 signatures in opposition to the board's decision. She says the petition will be presented to the parole board on Monday, and while Elmore is gathering signatures, others are meeting and discussing child abuse. Right now, inside the state office building, Tommy and Glenn Elmore are presenting to the Indiana Parole Board petitions containing in the neighborhood of 5,000 signatures. The signers want the parole board to rescind its action, which would free Gertrude Banaszewski, convicted in the torture murder of 16-year-old Sylvia Likens from the women's prison. Like the majority of the parole board, one man told me he felt the Banaszewski woman had paid for her crime and deserves to be freed. Whether the petitions the Elmores worked so hard to get signatures on will have any effect on the parole board is doubtful. In fact, Chairman Lou Gregory, who is from another area of Indiana and probably is too young to remember the Likens murder, has said the parole can't be revoked unless its terms are violated. He did vote against it. Bill Donella, WIBC News. 
When Gertrude Banaszewski is released into the general population within the next three weeks, she won't be known by that name. The woman convicted of the 1965 torture slaying of 16-year-old Sylvia Likens had her name legally changed last year to Nadine Van Fossen. Circuit Court Judge John Ryan granted the woman's request to abandon her married name of Banaszewski and revert to her maiden name, Van Fossen, and also take her middle name, Nadine, as her first name. That happened May 21st of 1984. When Van Fossen appeared for her parole board hearing, pictures were not permitted to be taken, and the parole board will not release the exact date and time of the woman's release. Laurie Schaefer, WIBC News. A cousin of Jenny Likens, sister of a 16-year-old girl tortured and murdered on the east side 20 years ago, has testified in a hearing aimed at keeping the dead girl's convicted killer in jail. Lucille Allen told a packed Superior Court Room 6 that Jenny, now 35, was a happy child, normal except for a polio deformity, before she and her 16-year-old sister Sylvia went to stay with Gertrude Banaszewski. Since Sylvia's torture murder, Ms. Allen says Jenny has had three nervous breakdowns, is on medication, and sees a psychiatrist monthly for paranoia. And she wants a light on even when she sleeps. Ms. Allen also says Jenny remains deathly afraid of the Banaszewski woman, even though it has been more than 20 years since she was threatened by her. Earlier, Lou Gregory, chairman of the state parole board, admitted that no public notice was given of meetings at which a parole for Banaszewski was discussed, and the meetings were not open to the public or news media. A suit filed to stop her parole charges it should be set aside because the board violated Indiana's open-door law. Bill Donella, WIBC News. A parole board decision granting the release of torture slayer Gertrude Banaszewski has been ruled null and void by a Marion County judge. The judge ruled the Indiana Parole Board violated Indiana's open door law by holding their parole hearing in private. The ruling was the result of a suit brought by the victim's rights group Protect the Innocent, Society's League Against Molestation, and Jenny Likens, the younger sister of Sylvia, the girl tortured to death by Mrs. Banaszewski and a gang of neighborhood children. The judge ruled that because the parole board is a public body, they must abide by the state's open door law, something that the board never has done. The parole hearing on Banaszewski must be held again after the public has been notified and arrangements made for the hearing to be open. The judge, however, did not order the parole board and the State Department of Corrections to release documents to the groups which filed suit. After the decision, Jenny Likens sobbed, saying that she hopes and prays Banaszewski never gets out of prison. Laurie Schaefer, WIBC News. The parole hearing for convicted torture slayer Gertrude Banaszewski will go on as planned. But Judge Michael Dugan did rule that the parole board and Department of Corrections must release the woman's psychiatric records to protect the innocent, the group which went to court along with society's League Against Molestation and the victim's sister, Jenny Likens. PTI's attorney, Charles Gaddy, says the judge's ruling was a victory combined with defeat. But Gaddy and Ross Stovall of PTI agree the judge's decision was a first step in the fight for victims' rights. Laurie Schaefer, WIBC News. The minister who led Gertrude Benashevsky to salvation has called for people of the community to forgive and forget. The Reverend Reuben Field Sr., pastor of the Ravenbrook Widow Missionary Baptist Bible Church, says Mrs. Benashevsky has changed for the better since she became a Christian some ten years ago. Reverend Field says he understands those who oppose her parole from the Indiana Women's Prison late this month and their concern for safety. We, too, do not want unrepentant offenders on the street. Had we been on the jury at the time of Mrs. Banisuski's trial for the torture slaying of little Sylvia Lackens, we would have cast our vote to execute her. But Reverend Field says that had he been on the parole board recently, he'd have voted for Mrs. Banaszewski's release. He says he's witnessed her repentance and deep sorrow and has heard her say in her prayers that she doesn't deserve to be alive. And Reverend Fields, who confessed to belief in capital punishment, suggested, let's not imprison ourselves in the spirit of unforgiveness. Bill Donella, WIBC News. I got a bush that could be undone, but it can't be undone. It's impossible. That is Gertrude Banaszewski testifying before the Indiana Parole Board about the torture slaying 20 years ago of 16-year-old Sylvia Likens, a boarder at the Banaszewski home. Banaszewski was convicted of that murder and sentenced to life in prison, but after a day of testimony from the public and members of the Likens family as to why the parole board should or should not parole the now 57-year-old woman, the board vote was identical to one taken in closed session several months ago. 
The board voted three to two for parole. Board Chairman Lewis Gregory says the testimony did affect him and other board members, though ultimately it did not change the vote. And it's not an easy decision. Uh, if it was, things would have been a lot easier for everybody on the board. Uh, it's an agonizing decision. Gregory says it's now up to the State Department of Corrections when to free Banaszewski on parole, though he expects it will be soon. Meanwhile, the attorney for the Likens family says he and lawyers for Protect the Innocent and Society's League Against Molestation will meet Friday morning to decide if, again, they would challenge the parole board's decision. Cheryl Boone, WIBC News. More than 20 years after she entered the Indiana women's prison, convicted murderess Gertrude Banaszewski walked out as Nadine von Vossen. She had her name changed legally even before the first parole granted her by the Indiana Parole Board and ruled invalid by Superior Court Judge Michael Dugan. Before leaving, Ms. Von Fossen made a final plea. I just wish, you know, people would please forgive me. You know, I can't undo anything. I, uh, I know that the Lord has forgiven me. I have my peace inside. But I still have to live with this every day. And it's it's terrible. You just don't know what it does. Many people in the community have not forgiven Gertrude Banaszewski. While she visited with reporters before driving away, a car drove by on the street outside the prison, and the passenger yelled, Shoot that bitch. Her eyes darted toward the sound as a look of pain or fear easily read in them. Bill Donella, WIBC News. The terms of Gertrude Banaszewski's parole are no different than for any other parolee. That's according to Vaughn Overstreet of the State Department of Corrections. Those terms include periodic visits to her parole officer and obtaining permission before traveling out of the city or state. Overstreet says Mrs. Banaszewski's term of parole is indefinite. Uh, I would suggest that she'd be on parole probably on active supervision probably uh, over a year. Uh, that will depend entirely upon how well she adjusts them and uh, the degree of stability and uh, degree of, uh, uh, of uh, success she has in her parole adjustment. So there's no set term of parole? Oak, a new code, yes. One year, mandatory. Uh, they can be discharged sooner. Old code uh, is discretionary with the department. And even though Banaszewski has legally changed her name to Nadine Van Fossen, Overstreet says department records will continue to track her under the name Banaszewski because that's the name she was convicted and incarcerated under. Cheryl Boone, WIBC News.